The Mega Man Legacy Collection is out now, bringing six classic Capcom games to modern platforms. But this isn't a basic port, it's a faithful reproduction using source elements to create a reverent, future-proof version of all six games. But why are these six games so important, interesting, and fun? Let's take a quick look at all six games to see how they've changed over time and how they became some of gaming's most revered adventures. Back in 1987, most 8-bit games took you from level to level, guiding you on a predetermined path. Mega Man 1 flipped the script by giving players a choice to tackle the six stages in any order we wanted. And part of the reason for this choice was what happened once you beat one of the stages. You actually stole the boss's weapon and could use it on the other bosses. This meant not just a rock-paper-scissors relationship among those bosses, but an elaborate mystery that kept school playgrounds abuzz with conversations about which boss was weak to the other, what order you should tackle the levels in, and all this happened years before the internet and even before many game magazines were widely available. The first few Mega Man games are kinda light on story, but the general premise, Dr. Wily steals six industrial robots and reprogram them for violence, was enough to get most kids on board. One other quick note about the first game, a small note about Mega Man himself, his idle animation. Most game characters in the 80s simply stood there, paralyzed without your input. Mega Man, on the other hand, blinked through the TV, suggesting he knew what to do but was simply awaiting your orders. A blinking character may not seem like a big deal today, but little details like this help make the character and the world feel real. A world that would only grow with Mega Man 2. Now you may have missed Mega Man 1, either because you never saw it at a rental shop or because the box art scared you away. But Mega Man 2 made a huge splash thanks to a dramatic opening that's inspired homages and parodies for years. Right away you can see improvements in the character select screen, the backgrounds, the variety of weapons obtained from the bosses. Just about everything in Mega Man 2 was stunning in its day. This is especially true of some of the bosses waiting for you in Dr. Wily's castle. But before you got to the castle, you had to tackle eight all-new robots designed to send Mega Man to the scrap heap. These robot masters are great one-on-one -on -one battles in and of themselves, but the stages that lead up to them are some of the most iconic levels of all time. Flash Man's slippery tiles, Heat Man's mind-shredding platform section, and of course, Quick Man's insta-kill beams of death. After defeating certain bosses, Mega Man's creator, Dr. Light, would complete new items for your use, handily named item 1, 2, and 3. These are useful throughout the game, but if you're ready to walk down the speedrun path, they're also a great way to skip portions of the level. This all adds up to a rock-solid game design that rapidly doles out new weapons and abilities while simultaneously challenging you with ingenious level design and boss battles. It's that very formula that helped make Mega Man 2 stand the test of time. That formula is expanded and arguably perfected in Mega Man 3, where eight robots once again menace our hero. Not to be outdone, Dr. Light creates Rush, Mega Man's robot dog, to replace the items from Mega Man 2. Plus, Dr. Light gives Mega Man a new ability, teaching him how to slide through narrow areas or underneath enemies. We're also treated to some very interesting level design, like Snake Man's Serpentine Dungeon and Gemini Man's uh, Moon Swamp filled with penguins? After beating the initial eight robots in Mega Man 1 and 2, you'd usually go straight to Dr. Wily's castle and march towards the end of the game. But starting with Mega Man 3, you'd get an additional set of levels before tackling the castle. Levels that put your newly equipped Mega Man through his paces. In this case, the new stages are battle-damaged, reimagined areas that you just played through, but now with different layouts, enemy placement, and, strangely enough, husk robots that behave like the Mega Man 2 bosses. And perhaps most importantly, Mega Man 3 introduces Proto Man, the bot built before Mega Man. Proto Man debuts as a frenemy who sometimes attacks you, and other times helps you find your way to the boss. His intentions are made a bit clearer by the end of the game, where he saves Mega Man from certain destruction. While there was a semblance of a story with Mega Man 1 and 2, Part 3's ending really starts to craft an ongoing narrative that persists across the upcoming sequels, especially Mega Man 4, which opens with a lengthy cutscene. With Dr. Wily seemingly defeated, a new villain rises to take his place. Meet Dr. Cossack, a genius inventor who not only boasts that he's the greatest scientist of all time, but also sends his creations to take over the world. Not sure how Toad Man fits into that plan, but hey, at least he can dance. This new threat prompts Dr. Light to invent the Mega Buster, a new default weapon that fires standard shots as well as a powerful burst. Mega Man is also outfitted with a grappling hook and a balloon item, which are discovered by exploring some of Mega Man 4's hidden paths. 
These new items are just the first step in an ongoing arms race between Dr. Light and Dr. Wily, as each game adds more and more weapons to Mega Man's arsenal. Oh wait, did we just spoil the fact that Dr. Wily's back? Well, it turns out he survived the end of Mega Man 3 and blackmailed Dr. Cossack into attacking Mega Man. This fact is revealed to us by none other than Proto Man, who now seems to truly be on the side of good. So as you can see, story really does take center stage in Mega Man 4. In addition to that opening, we also get an interlude with Cossack and his daughter Kalinka, and an explosive ending that shows Dr. Wily's latest castle crumbling into dust. However, not long after that happens, Proto Man goes nuts and kidnaps Dr. Light, setting the events of Mega Man 5 into motion. With another eight robots on the rampage, Mega Man and Rush spring into action. Since Dr. Light is MIA, Dr. Cossack steps up and adds some extra oomph to the Mega Buster, giving it additional stopping power and a new look to boot. He also creates the helpful Birdbot Beat, who can help Mega Man in battle, but only after you've spelled out Mega Man 5 in giant letters hidden around the world. Hey, Cossack still working out the kinks on this one. At this point, developers knew a lot more about their 8-bit hardware, and it shows in Mega Man 5 with more elaborate backgrounds and inventive stages that messed with your expectations. And as always, the music is among the best the era ever had. We won't dig into the story too much this time, but suffice it to say, Proto Man may or may not be the true villain of this tale. The Blue Bomber's 8-bit era concludes with Mega Man 6, which sees a mysterious man named Mr. X arranging a global robot tournament. Naturally, this ends with Mr. X stealing all the robots and then, you guessed it, attempting to take over the world. Dr. Light responds by creating two powerful suits of armor that give Mega Man all new abilities. They have their drawbacks, but it's also just cool to fly around and explore the levels. Speaking of the levels, while prior games did offer branching paths, Mega Man 6 has quite a few areas where you have more than one route to choose from. Four of these alternate paths are there just to lure you away from the stage's true bosses. All of this just scratches the surface of what makes these games so much fun. We didn't even mention all the cool mini-bosses, the great Mega Man 2 ending, Eddie the sorta helpful but not really robot. There's so much to play and enjoy that just these six games alone, beautifully restored, are a great entry point to the series. But for longtime fans, Mega Man Legacy Collection also comes with a music player, hundreds of pieces of high-res production art, old flyers from the 80s and 90s, a challenge mode with online leaderboards, and lots more nifty features detailed over on Capcom Unity. The most important detail, of course, is the price. Just $14.99 for the digital versions available now, with a $29.99 physical version coming in 2016. <laughs> 